G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Trip's nice too. Glad <laughs> to see you. All right, wonderful. We're going to go inside and have a look at what you've been doing. Please do. Excellent. Please do. That's wonderful. You've got a great place here. It is. It's it's marvelous. Yeah. Hello, welcome. Come into my studio. This is. Oh, wow. That's just wonderful, isn't it? My space. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Madeline Eckerblad. And actually, Madeline's, we're on Maclay Island right now, just uh, outside uh, Brisbane, isn't it? It is. It is. 45 minutes away from the CBD. And this is her studio. It's an amazing place. The whole bottom floor of this place is just a studio. It's incredible. Tell me about what you're doing right here. All my music, all my work is all about music. And uh, I have to, in my paintings, there have to be uh, movement, mm -hmm. rhythm, everything like that. So there's hence a piano. Uh, I do guitars, I love violins, uh, cellos, also another passion. And with the music here, I actually um, use old manuscripts and I have quite a number of second-hand bookshops that search for the old manuscripts for me. And they do, they keep them for me here. As you can see, I have some beautiful pieces. Now these are all old manuscripts, They're, but they've been torn, they've been tattered, there's pages, a uh, single page. You know, I'm not destroying pieces of manuscripts, please don't get that. These are pieces that um, would probably be thrown away anyway. And, and uh, you know, these are works of art and I am literally transposing them onto my canvas. Uh, I use a, a really nice strong binder medium that interacts with the with the actual canvas itself. Uh, I then polish it with a with the binder medium over the top. Um, so I really try and create movement and music in paintings. So this is really this is the theme that that, that uh, permeates all of your work all the way through it. That's whether it be a piano or a guitar, which I think is what we're, what we're doing today with you, isn't it? We are going to do a pack. Excellent. A we're guitar. going to call those yep. guitar and art fans out there. We're doing a guitar. <laughs> but uh, basically the music really is, it's, uh, it's the sort of the vibration of the art, I suppose, is it? It is. It speaks to me. It Excellent. really speaks to me. And people say, um, uh, do I play? Uh -huh. Do I play music? No, unfortunately I don't. I'm tone deaf. I'm also slightly deaf in my right ear. Okay. Um, but I listen to music. I can be standing in the bamboo grove at the Mount Cutha Gardens because I do a lot of outdoor painting. And you can stand there and there's, there's silence and then all of a sudden a little wind will blow. The bamboo starts to drum together mm -hmm. and the flutes can come through. How can you not paint music? That's it. That's, that's what I feel. Madeline, I understand that you're the director of OMSA in Brisbane as well, an art school. Yes, the OMSA, the Onward Motivational School for Artists. And I, at any given time, I am helping motivate uh, up to 39 artists. And they, uh, they come to me for direction. I do not teach. I, I, I'm very strict about that, is that it is a motivational school. So I have a lot of professional artists who paint at the school, but they might just need a tap on the shoulder to say, pull out of your painting, go and have a cup of coffee, or 
the most exciting part is in the last 10 minutes of a painting, remember to breathe. <laughs> and a lot of professional artists forget that. We, we, that is emotion. That is really, and, and that is what my school is all about. That's great. So Madeline, what are we going to paint today? Today I am going to take you outside because that is where I start. Uh, mainly because I'm such a messy painter. Okay. And I start with enamels which need to be dribbled onto the ground. Well, you know, on my canvas is on the ground and that's how I start. And I have, oh, and that's where I get my ribbon. Right. Okay, well, let's go outside and have a look then. And uh, obviously you're using the acrylics? No, it's actually enamels. It's enamels, yes, okay, yes, of course, it's enamels. Enamel. And we're actually uh, sort of dribbling you, doing that Jackson Pollock thing, of course, but. We're dribbling. What type of, do you stretch your own canvas? Yes, I like to stretch my own canvas. I buy a 10 ounce canvas. Mm -hmm. um, you can get 8, 10 or 12. I particularly like the 10. So in this part of the process, do you normally work outside and, and, and work in this area? Yes, yeah. I like, I like the um, on plain air. I, I love outdoor painting. Mm -hmm. um, I get inspiration by being outdoors. I have a lot more freedom. Um, I'm messy, so it gives me a chance to, uh, well, I don't need to clean up out here. Absolutely. Does the thickness of the uh, the end of the brush matter at all? It's, oh yes, yeah, yes it does, yeah okay. definitely. Um, and uh, I have a nice collection of uh, sticks. Okay, we'll have, a, we'll have a look at those <laughs> Stick, later on. Sticks and, and brushes. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, like I said, it's free form. So I really do have to pull up, pull out um, and, and, and start creating the the painting. So once we've finished this particular process, uh, we start putting some colours down. That's it. I, I, yeah, that is the next process, is to, is to um, uh, push the background out and bring this foreground in. Well, let's head back into the studio then. Rubbing in with the sponge, putting the inks in as we go along. Now it's all energy art. This is the way I work. I scrub in, I pull out, I go back in again. And my, my art should have some energy and movement in it. You're a very, um, very hands-on artist. Most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. I might just bring this deeper horizon of where the hill is going to be along in there, which gives me a background to run with. So the paint that you put on there, Madeline, is it very thick? Yes, it yes. I mean, it, it is, you know, I mean, I actually like um, the naphtha light red, what is this, artilia, and uh, the burnt umber. You put those two colours together, what you're creating, and I love the idea of creating movement in the sky. So when you're using movement in the sky, you've literally got to move with it. Um, the, the person who I think did the best skies um, is Constable, because we go every, uh, every the first and third Tuesdays we go to the Mount Cooper Botanic Gardens. And we do a lot of, a lot of painting there. Uh, one thing I do also say is I just stepped back then, and I shouldn't have done that because what I, what is the best thing to do is what I to ask my, what I ask my artists at the school is when you're in a painting, don't just step back and look at it because you're still there. What you need to do is actually fracture that image, turn your back on it, take a step then look back at it and see, okay, well, my, immediately, this is where I was working, but now I know I need to come back here. And that's little tricks. <laughs> I heard, I, I, where's my spray bottle? If it's starting to dry too fast in our Queensland humidity, which is, we can tell even in this, just wet the canvas. Don't go over the paint itself. Just dampen that canvas a little bit. And all of a sudden it slows the process down 
without destroying too much of the hue in the paint because we all know water and acrylics are enemies. So do you ever use a, a retarding medium at all or just the water? I will use a retarder when it's January and February. Okay. Purely only in those months. You have to continually read your painting. If your painting takes on a life of its own, which is often the case, you have to step back and listen to it. There's, um, which, um, which is a, basically if you force yourself to finish that painting with the preconceived idea that you had, then it, you might be so totally disappointed with that painting that it just goes under the bed. You don't show anyone anything like that. So the magic is to continually listen to your painting to continually research your painting as to where it's going, walk around, go and have a cup of coffee, come back, analyze the painting, and just keep, keep looking at it. See, I'm seeing that this is still not dark enough. Now that's, that's all dried, what I'd like to do is go back in with the, with the orange ink and the sponge when I start with a blank canvas, I, I put my enamels down and basically the enamel is house paint. I, I, I'm a controlled Jackson Pollock. So it, the, what, what I do is I give that purpose. So it's the foreground that I'm seeing um, the, with, the, with just the white canvas and the black enamel. And once, once I've felt that, um, I can feel this guitar. It really is. And it, I mean, it's starting to sing with these flowers. So the background is purely just background, but the drama of using the red. Uh, so as I go along, there'll be, there'll be the, um, the mountain ranges in the background here, which will give that distance. But I wanted, I wanted this, this foreground. I wanted it um, playing with, with the background at the same time which is what I'm hoping is going to finish, going to be the finished thing. Um, now I need to bring this down a bit further because I'm, I'm sort of a bit stuck up here as to the, the line of mountains. So what I'm going to do is you can see I've also started bringing down the reds down here, but just in the middle section, I am also going to create, now this is where I love backlighting. Backlighting would have to be one of the most beautiful techniques and that is when my knees are locked because I am cutting in around the enamel that is already hardened on my canvas and I bring that into to play. So what I would like happen is the interaction coming so tight up against that that ridge of the guitar. Now, still creating that image by, literally I'm scrubbing, my poor brushes. They just, they, they, they don't, um, they don't uh, take kindly, but the magic is, I mean, I'm, I'm using the Montmartre brush. They're, they're just great. Uh, I have, what size brush do you actually use? Uh, this is a number 10, um, when, when it comes to Larger paintings, uh, the, I don't really go too much larger than a 24, which is, which is um, a beautiful paintbrush as well. Um, one of my favourite uh, paintbrushes, of course, uh, is the feather, the fan brush. Because I scrub a lot of work, you can go in and scrub all of, as well. It really creates um, crevices in your painting and then when it dries you overpaint and you've got all these beautiful ridges. Um, a, a hint to look after your brushes, um, liquid uh, detergent like Omo, it has to be liquid because it's, um, it's the enzymes in the, in the detergent, uh, clothing detergent. Uh, let them soak overnight uh, in, you know, about an inch you know, into a glass, 
Uh, rinse them out the next morning and, or you know, a couple of days if they're oils, you'll have to leave them for a couple of days. Um, and they come out absolute perfect. It's really very freeform and free flow, isn't it? That is why I love calling it freeform okay. because it is freeform. I'm going back over some of the works as well that I put in earlier. Now I want to put those those frets in and just bring them out up a little bit thicker. Now, how about the cords? <laughs> how about the cords? And another line, another line. So I work fast when it comes to this because you're continually stirring and creating that that dribbling effect and there's the there's the movement. Now I want to let that dry. Um, now I know where it's going. I'd like to let that dry and go back into the rest of the painting later. That's very tactile, isn't it? Can you just talk to me a little bit about that? Well, this is the enamel uh, that I've used, and it is it is quite proud of the painting. So, when I first start the painting, I use the enamel um, just straight onto the uh, white canvas, um, uh, as you saw in the beginning, and uh, to finish the painting. Um, once I've played with it and pulled it out, and I've pushed the the, the inks back in and out and everything like that, uh, you can see I've. I've brought in the background um, and you know the, the, the naphthol light red and the burnt umber, they sing together and then when you have this proud uh, enamel standing up you can see it's, it, it might even come up shiny on the, on the screen um, and it is very tactile, you can, you can feel the painting. I have no problems people going over my work, if they need to touch the work they can touch the work. Oh, this is. Uh, well, there you go. All the studio. This yes. is your sort of. This is your private gallery, really, isn't it? It is. It is. It's just amazing. So let me just ask you the question: What what influenced you to put these particular musical pieces actually in the work? Was anybody did did, did that for you at all? No, because I actually just painted with the enamels. You know, it was um, enamel on canvas. Okay. Um, and then it was one day um, I actually saw a piece of music. After I'd done the painting, I saw that I could actually superimpose yeah. uh, the manuscript and the enamels play on beautifully with it. Looks wonderful. So you're actually a published artist as well? Yes. Well, so, self-published. Okay. Self-published. So you've got, so what, what have you got here? The Reluctant Artist. Yes, that was the first one. And then we've got Art in a Very Ordinary World. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're intriguing titles to say the least. They're, they're motivational books yeah. for artists. Uh, the Art Shed sells them for me, Wonderful. which is really, you know, very Wonderful. grateful for them. Been inspired now to do another one. That's so great. the third book is going to be called I Started Painting a Tree. <laughs> so where's the title? The That's the title page. The statement says it all, I yes, think. Yes, yes. Let's get back to, to Omsa just before we go and, and your teaching. I mean, this is a great inspiration for you doing this with people, isn't it? Just explain that a bit to me. Uh, well, OMSA started in 2004 mm -hmm. uh, with two artists. I, I had a vision, I knew what I wanted to do, and I wanted to help artists who are introverts, who really can't 
take that next step and and be confident in themselves uh, take the step to actually go and show their work that type of thing so being an extrovert I opened up the motivational school for artists onward motivational school for artists and uh, over the years it has been amazing the my 81 year old artist has been picked up by a gallery in Germany. That's wonderful. The um, six of my artists uh, have been picked up to have their uh, photographs of their paintings in the International Contemporary Artist Book. Uh, the, they're having shows. We go outdoor painting. I run the classes every Friday mornings mm -hmm. and every second Saturday at the Balmoral Bowls Club at Morningside. Um, I rent the, the beautiful big function room there and uh, oh, it's good. I supply the easels and tables and copious quantities of jazz. <laughs> so love me, love my jazz. Um, and and it is a it's a wonderful group. They they talk about art. They um, they'll go to the galleries together. So it's more it's more a family. It really is. That's Even though right. they come and go, it it's a, it's a beautiful group. Excellent, so Madeline. Your plans for the near future. OMSA. Um, it's always going to be part of my life. Uh, I absolutely love the artists there. I love um, their energy. They, they keep me grounded. Um, they also keep the Bohemian alive. Um, and uh, there's some very talented artists and I'd like to help nurture them. That's excellent. Finished, finished job. Uh, what was the title of this picture again? Oh, I'm so exhausted. That should be the title. Um, as the sun grows warm and birds sing. It's a wonderful piece, it, it really is. And I'd really like to thank you for inviting us into your home and uh, being part of Colour in Your Life. Uh, it's, it's artists like yourself that, uh, that makes the show exceptional in the first place. I hope but so. Thank you so much, Madeline. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. Don't forget, viewers, if you'd like to see more talented artists like Madeline, you can come to colourinyourlife.com.au. We'll see you next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show, guys, and the work of Madeline Elkbart. And until next time, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. Some of the great artists from Colour in Your Life are going to be at Sea Gallery, November the 1st, James Street, Fortitude Valley in Brisbane for an exhibition. Come along and see these amazing artists in the one place. Sea Gallery, 1st of November, Brisbane. See you there, guys.